All right, folks, welcome in to another edition of the Backwoods Bible Broadcast with your two hillbillies, Andrew Sluter, pastor of the Bible Baptist Church, and Randy Keener, full-time evangelist out of the New Manor Pudding Baptist Church. Man of Pudding. Man of Pudding. We got two Yankees here. Pudding. Honorary, yeah, Pudding. We got two honorable or two honorary hillbillies with us honorary. tonight. Honorary. Hon honorary and honorable and whatever yeah. else. Yeah. Uh, we got Brother Bob Nogowski. Yeah. I said that I've been calling him. I said I was calling him Brother Nagalski all night long. Just not late for dinner. Just yeah, I call him whatever. Just not late for dinner. And uh, then we got Brother Tony Dooley, pastor of the First Baptist Church of Bowen City, Michigan. So Beautiful. good to have you with us both tonight. Thank you. Amen. Good. Brother Randy, how in the world are you? I'm good. I don't know why you ain't wearing a white shirt, but you know, because I wasn't preaching. Well, if I was preaching, I'd be in a white shirt. Well, you never know. The Lord may have wanted you to preach tonight. Nope, he didn't. If he, <laughs> if he did, I'd be in a white shirt. Well, that's providence right there. Hello. I think there's a swirling of a cam or something. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that preach the other night. Yeah. Amen. Well, we've been having a good time up here in Michigan. We went fishing today. I didn't catch anything. Brother Randy caught a bass, and then Brother Josh, which is Brother Duty's uh, uh, son, caught a trout. Mm -hmm. Wasn't big enough to keep, but I didn't catch nothing. But a bad day fishing is always better than a good day working. Is what I say. So, anyway, well, I don't know what we're going to do tonight. We're, we'll take some questions. We got Brother Nagalski here. We've been in meeting this week. Uh, Brother Randy's preached. I've preached. Uh, for the uh, for the Spurgeon has been preaching, and so it's all been good. So. Um, so anyway, well, if you've got a question or a comment or anything you want to ask us. Feel free. We're just going to read them off the <laughs> off the thing tonight. Yeah. This is what traveling traveling with the broadcast means. Well, I, I'll tell you two things that could jumpstart some questions. Number one is Pastor Duty played for years with his father in Sound Doctrine. Yeah, and they had a cult following in Asheville. <laughs> they sure did. Yeah. We were a cult. Yeah. We sacrificed squirrels to their image. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know they had that song. What the preacher <laughs> said. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and, well, and I'd say that probably a lot of people know uh, both of these fellows, too, that watch. Probably a lot. Because I just saw the Albrechts come on. You know the Albrechts. Yes, I do. Y'all know them? Yeah. yeah, we'll see them uh, in September. So, uh, And also the Chick Track, Bad Bob. That's mm. you, right? Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes it was Big Bob. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, I, I had no idea that that was you. Oh, good. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, my wife actually told me about that. Said that you gave her one at Dr. Upman's funeral. Yeah. So, well, we got. Uh, I'll be leaving tomorrow. But we got a youth amen. meeting in the. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we got a youth meeting going on tomorrow well, at eleven o'clock. Youth rally here. Youth 11, rally. Eleven to three. Youth rally. Yeah, that's what they do down at the Manning. So anyway, mm -hmm. all right. Well, listen, we've got some comments and questions rolling in. Uh, Leaf Bacchus says, "Praise Jesus." Well, praise Jesus for the leaf. Uh, Joshua Alvarez says hello from Atwood, Tennessee. Good to hear from you, brother. Your brother Josh is going to be at the at the blowout. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, he actually won the spot. He won the we spot. We gave away one last motel room last yeah. week on the broadcast, and he won that. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we, we gave away. away. Yeah. I sacrificed my yeah. love offering for that motel room. <laughs> but uh, you didn't tell room this week. You <laughs> didn't sacrifice your hotel room for that. You did that. You owe me about negative hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, whatever. <laughs> I was going to give you 25 the hotel cost seven. Well, I'll tell you, the love offering you give me, last year, I got next to nothing had to pay for my meal at Waffle House. Oh, man, that's bad. Yeah, that's how he treats people. That's what you got to do now, so. That, that's, that's how it happens man. down there. Oh, well, anyway. It's terrible. Uh, it, it's our meeting, and I'm having to give him a yeah. love offering. Listen to him. Ask him how much my love offering was for I, that week. I was up to like 12 o'clock at night listening to Jack Patterson talk about how to kill people with different instruments at the Waffle House. That's true. Sure shake her cross nose, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Knives, or a fork Fork. in the neck, yeah. She depends on what time you go to Waffle House. <laughs> <laughs> hey, J.L. Bryan says, hello, my crazy brother. Preach it. Well, hello there, Brother Brian down there in Mexico. RVG guy. Amen. First one ever take it, and we like him. Sam Schaefer says, hey, brothers. Hello, Brother Schaefer. He says, God bless. Uh, she who Abraham, she who Abraham says, amen. I felt like I was speaking in tongues just pronouncing his name. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Matthew Christensen says, hello, men. How do you answer the problem of evil? Calvinists claim God ordains evil for his glory. 
Brother Duty, how do you answer the fact? Because let's, God did create God evil. God created evil. He created it because there was an opposite to him once Satan, once there was sin in his universe, in his creation. Mm -hmm. He had to create something that was opposite him, so he created evil. Okay. And so how, do you think that God gets glory out of evil? How does he get glory out of or, evil? Or does he, and well, I said does he, or do you think he does? And if he does, how so? That I'd have to study out. I can't answer that. You think Brother, Brother Nogalski will answer. I'm, I'm thinking about this evil thing. Uh, just like God created uh, hell for the devil and his angels, mm -hmm. and that's how darkness came about in the universe, because it's all light. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I would think uh, he got glory out of that. If uh, I've got a little... That's good. I that's got, got, that's got, really good. I've got like a little bit of a... So you, it may be my Catholic background, but it's like I always figured that... Uh, God already knew stuff was going to happen before it was going to happen. Not that he's a Calvinist, but because he is God. And uh, so the devil took a third of the angels with him. And that leaves two thirds left, right? Yeah, two thirds so left. So now, now they get to watch this whole thing play out, showing them that they made the right decision. So God will get glory. Well, I think you just said one of the most profound things I've ever heard in my life. No joke. Are you saying that you believe that God created darkness when he created hell? I, have you ever heard that before, Andy? Not till today. No. <laughs> and he did all that immediately upon that devil. Have you ever heard that from the gospel? I, 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 Brother Duty? This is my uh, pastor. I sat on him for That's right. Years. That's right. I forget. <laughs> so, yeah. That's a profound. I don't, have to study, I don't want to say that I absolutely believe that, but that's interesting. Because hell was prepared for the devilization. That was the thing where the darkness came from yeah. Yeah. when he created hell. Outer darkness. Yeah. Outer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Brother Andy, what do you think about it? Well, if that didn't support the gap there, I believe that. I was literally <laughs> thinking the exact same thing. I know how he's going to say because he's not a gapper. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. That's yeah, interesting. If you study it through the Bible, darkness is, is a picture of God's judgment, a picture of God separating him. He's got to be separate from sin. He's, mm -hmm. separate, he's holy, he's harmless, undefiled, separate from sin. No and, when, and when he created darkness, it was a means of separating himself from evil that, that was generated because there was an opposition to God. Until Satan said, I will ascend, there was no opposition to God. Well, as you have a free will. They do have a free will. They do have a free will. And they chose. As uh, you're doing whatever you're doing, Andrew. I'm just looking at the verse for the next year. Okay. I, I will just say this about God getting glory from evil. Um, you know, those wicked men, the, the Bible says that the wicked were created for the day of judgment. And in eternity, the wicked... You know, a lot of times we're thinking lost friends, family, and whatnot. In eternity, they're going to be viewed as the enemies of God, and mm -hmm. he's going to triumph over his enemies. Mm -hmm. So he will receive glory even from the wicked. And yeah. Every knee will bow. Every yes. tongue will confess. Yeah. I think it's important to understand, though, that, that God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, saith the Lord. So the wicked dying gives God no pleasure. And if all things were created for his pleasure, then that means that when a wicked man dies in his sin, he's going against the intention of his create of his creative purpose. Mm -hmm. So it destroys Calvinism. Uh, in all this conversation, that's what you have to keep in mind, that in no way do these ideas or thoughts in any way uh, negate the fact that all men, God wants all men to be saved. Sure. Um, and all men are responsible. All men are responsible. That's exactly right. You skipped a comment, though. John Albrecht said, nice beer, Brother Bob. Oh, I did I skip wanted that. to get that in there for you, Brother Bob. Sorry. I'm, I'm trying. Me and Brother do your own team. My team clean oil well, face. I, it's only because. Oh, clean see, I, I, I've aspired to try to reach my pastor's uh, <laughs> beard aficionado, but when I grow on it, it looks nasty. <laughs> and this is the first time I've let it, let it stay out. Usually I just start growing it in September for hunting. Uh, so, you know, there were some comments about it, and I, I still got a little rebellious bug. I said, oh, okay, let's keep it on there. <laughs> so well, I may shave it off. My prerogative. Hey, Amen. I agree with that. I agree with that. Okay, so Brother Sam Schaefer, good to hear from him. He asked about first print, and I'm using a pink Bible. This is oh, what man. Randy's new wife, me, this brought guy. this to me. Me brought this to me. And so this is pink not mine. Too. Yeah, pink. Pink tie. That's not what? Man, it's close. Are you? <laughs> that's a red tie. I tell you. Man. One of those false accusing the breath. Man. Anyway. That's a whole lot of gnats right there. 
<coughs> All right, First Corinthians, uh, Sam Shaver says, how do you teach this? Here's the verse, First Corinthians 14, verse 34 and 35. Okay. Let your women keep okay. silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Now, how exactly do you teach this? I'll say this. I had a lady that I went to church with when she was growing up. Out, it was out in Yancey County. There was a pastor who did not let his women speak right. in the church at all. Like they didn't, they couldn't goes, say amen. It nothing. goes contrary to the context. It exactly. Does, the text without a context Explain is a that. pretext. The context is speaking in tongues. Right. Uh, it has nothing to do with woman, uh, you know, given testifying. Uh, it has nothing to do with a woman, you know, speaking as a as her own person in the service. As if, it's, if she's uh, given permission by the you know by the pastor uh, to testify or something like that, it's context. Yeah, you would agree with that, Brother Nagoski. Yeah, Nogowski. The context. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be in the context. Everything's with the tone thing when you look at it. Well, the way I teach it is, as soon as the women come in the door at my church, they have to keep silent till they go home. <laughs> well, that's you. That's your, I'm that's your gnat. I'm kidding. He I'm preached kidding. on gnats and swallowing elephants or something. Oh, camels. <laughs> yeah, was just yeah. I just yeah. got a, a private text message that said, yeah, women, shut up. I like that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, here's the thing. That's because he can't say it at home. <laughs> <laughs> Call his name on the broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I think he was just joking. I think the issue comes along with if we take this literally, then you've got women no longer being able to testify, no longer being right. able to sing, right? No longer being able to teach a Sunday school class, right. or if we're going to be just look, look, keep silence in the church. I mean, it is a shame for them to speak in the church. Then that means that when women come in, they can't even speak. They have to be completely right. silent. Yeah. And we, of course, know that's ludicrous. Right. Yeah. Or at least people should know that's ludicrous. Mm -hmm. Well, Randy, what do you think? Yeah, I agree with all that. Okay. Well, fair enough. Well, people that teach that, it's heresy, too. That's what the problem is. People taking things out of context. That's the whole deal. Yeah. I mean. I agree. Uh, let's see here. Eric Piet says, I was part of that sound doctrine following. <laughs> He's a good brother. But with that what the preacher said, that was like huge work. Well, I was in radio for 14 years, and almost till the day I left, what the preacher said was definitely weekly, oh, yeah. many times almost daily. Yeah. 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 yeah, I called it in yeah, all the time. That was a good one. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you can't get blood from a turnip. I like that one. Yeah. Yeah. The song, what the preacher said, uh, my dad had written that before uh, we, he, we met Harry Dix. And and when you know, we were you know, in a camp meeting at down at Charity Baptist in Dayton, Ohio, Brother Greg Eastep's camp meeting, Gem City Jubilee, and uh, Brother Harry Nix preached that message, and Dad brought that cassette home. And we was listening to it one day, and he goes, "Man!" And, and we got in the studio and recorded what the preacher said. He said, "I need to get that. We need to integrate that message into the song." Huh. And out came this cat. Oh man, like it fit perfect. <laughs> yeah. But... I don't know how like that didn't just like go on so like so gospel charts with Jack preaching in it. That's yeah, why it didn't. Well, you know how he wrote. Well, you know how he wrote. Well, how um, can it feel? Yeah. How does it feel? No, you know how it feels. That one I think of. But it didn't have no preachers hacking on. Well, that. Peg was preaching. Peg, yeah, she. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I'm not saying version, I'm not saying I believe in women preachers. I'm just saying I'd go to her, her ordination. <laughs> <Yeah. say. laughs> Someone, yeah. I, I just got a text that said, if women are to keep silent, I will peg preach her message. Yeah, right. Like before we even start on that. <laughs> hey, yeah. 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 Hey. The live version of Do Not Feel, she went to preach it on that. Really? Oh, yeah. Do you know how The Blood Is Still There was written? Yeah, he got a hold of Ruckman stuff. Brother, yeah. His yeah, dad. My dad was, we were free Baptist. My dad believed you, could, believed you could lose your salvation. and uh, uh, But he got a hold of some of Dr. Ruckman's stuff working at the factory and began and fell in love with the book. And that's how he began writing songs. Uh, he just fell in love with the Bible, and uh, he played music since he was 14 years old. But fell in love with this book and became his Bible, and he began to study it for himself. And over a period of time, uh, he, he was, that was one of the last things that he got settled on was eternal security. And, uh, and when he got settled on that, God gave him the song, but it's still there. Mm, amen. That's great. I remember singing that in the fifth grade in church. Wow. The, yeah, Man, I'm old. <laughs> yeah. I was in the fifth grade, so that's like been like 
seven years ago. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was like 10 when I sung that for the first time in church. I heard it on the Spencer's cassette tape. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Gary Hawkins says, tell Brother Bob, the Hawkins family said hello. Oh, hey, how you doing? They're watching. They're faithful listeners. They, they are. Caleb Hickam says, wild Caleb the Spoon Hickam coming in from Texas. And he keeps things stirred up on the broadcast, and we like it. Uh, in Ezekiel 20, all right, Josh Alvarez has got a Bible question here. In Ezekiel 28, 13, is the Eden the same one Adam was in, or was it a heavenly one like Larkin taught? I'm genuinely wondering, not trying to start another fight on the gap. Oh, yes, you did. Everybody's always trying to start a fight on the gap. I don't believe you, Joshua. I'm just, kidding. Yeah. I'm holding the fort. It's like this. So what do you okay? So brother, brother, Where's brother, that? duty. What do you, what do you? Read I've at? always generally looked at that as the uh, Eden, the, the Garden of God that's in heaven, just as He gave Moses the picture of things uh, to build the tabernacle of things, uh, pictures in heaven. I believe that uh, there's Mount Zion in the sides of the north. It's mm -hmm. not the Mount Zion down here. Uh, I believe that that was the Eden that was in uh, in heaven. Okay. Well, well, yeah, no, that sounds good to me. I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, I Amen. think that's great. Amen. Yeah, it is because it's more of a context. I think we start reading it. I mean, I mean, for the random. Let's see the irreversible fall of Tyrus. Hmm. Brother Andy, what do you think? Seems to me there's a Tyrus down here. There's a Tyrus up there. You know what I mean? Pulling the strings. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, Randy? I think you're, you're in the pictures on earth. You're in pictures. So, do you yeah. think that Satan is king on the earth? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, I believe that too. Well, we believe that too. It's dominion. It's dominion over this planet. Well, who had dominion? Satan or Adam? Satan at first, they were talking about if there was, <laughs> they were talking about death. Well, we, we ain't we ain't talking about that okay. tonight. Anyway, that's always been a point I've tried to make with the gap. But Ezekiel 28, 20, if you read Ezekiel 28, especially like chapter 31, you've got the Garden of Eden literally sinking down to the center of the earth. Mm -hmm. And that throws a wrench in gap and non gap. When you think about it, how? Well, because it's talking about the fall of Satan there. Okay. In Ezekiel 31. Yeah, I'm not sure how that would. And the flood out. comes in, it talks about it being flooded mm -hmm. and it's sinking down. It, but it's talking about, we, we looked at it one time and you were like, that throws a, a wrench in everything. Maybe. Yeah, we have to look at it. But anyway, if you want to know where the Garden of Eden is right now, it's in the center of the earth. Ezekiel 31 clearly teaches that. Um, and I think there may be people down in there still. Anyway, that's a different area. Hey, different time. No, no, I think there might be people still there. If if Adam and Eve had children before they fell, mm. they may still be there. Almost like Admiral Byrd. He's laughing at me. Uh, Admiral Byrd in the Hollow Earth. I read that book years ago. I'll show <laughs> years ago. That guy had me freaking out. What, what do you think about that's that Hollow Earth, brother? Really? I'm just thinking there's one. Truth to it, right? <laughs> anyway, all I'm saying I is, didn't know there was. A, all I'm, I did the '60s too, so yeah. you know sometimes your mind. Right? Right? Yeah. Hey, on, hey, on, but I'm in my defense, right in my podcast. defense, let's assume how long? How long was Adam and Eve in the garden? You know, what, what was the only sin Adam and Eve could have committed? Disobedience. For a long time, I always thought that the only sin Adam and Eve could commit was eating the truth. Okay, but sin, according to 1 John 3, 4, is the transgression of the law. Mm -hmm. So where there's no sin, there's no transgression, blah, blah, blah. So for a long time, I've taught the only sin they could commit was eating the tree, because that was the only law given. The problem is, is that wasn't the only law given. It was three. Don't eat the tree, dress the garden, and have babies. Yeah. How long were they in the garden? Second of all, how long would it be for them to be in the garden not having kids for them to be disobedient to that command. How long did it take the squirrels to have babies? How long did it take the, the dogs? The dog boat, yeah. So if they're in the garden for any length of time, not having children, then, then they're disobedient. So if they had kids, theoretically, that did not fall, they would have to go somewhere. And there are references to, at the second advent, the the the, the lower parts of the earth rejoicing at the second advent. Who's in the lower parts of the earth rejoicing? Yeah, because Abraham bosom was done away with. And how many times in the Bible does it talk about things under the earth and all that kind of stuff? I'm just, it's a theory. Well, it's, 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 a, it's, a a theory. it's a theory. Brother Duty's not impressed with <laughs> well, I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm, I'm, still looking at the, I'm still looking at the judgment of the Prince of Tyrus in the context <laughs> of chapter 28. And God's trying to show you some of his up yonder's pulling the strings down here. And that's the only reason I consider he to be up there. Could be. In the context. Could be. I'm sure the Stevies are going to get a hold of that clip of me saying that. Stevies? You mean Stevies? Who's Stevies? Steve Anderson. Stevia? We, we a, call him Steve. Artificial sweetener, isn't it? You know? Yeah. 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 We had. We had. Yeah. We had a couple come over to church. A couple of Stevies? Yeah. I didn't know who they were. I thought my church was growing. I thought God was blessing me. No. No. And then they started working on this so Jew thing. I'm saying, what are you talking about? Yeah. And they hate about the Jews. Of, yeah. I'm saying, nah. Eh, something wrong with this. And uh, they didn't come back. I don't know who the deal is. Eric Piet says, "Brother Bob is a great man of God." Amen. Who said that? Eric Piet. You know him? Yes. Thank you, Eric. Uh, now I got to pray like mad. So nothing happened to me. Got the big head. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hey, oh. Brother, Brother Bob got, got more compliments on here than any of us combined so far. I know. He's, He's going to be 69 years old. Yeah. He, is. he is. He was from the enemies that thought I'd fall like He's 30, been 40 years ago. Amen. God's merciful. He's gracious. How Roscoe said, love sound doctrine. Amen, Brother Roscoe. Well, Amen. Sound Doctrine's got a lot of compliments, too. Yeah, yeah. By default, I guess those go to Brother Duty. Yeah, yeah, by default. <laughs> so we ought to keep a tab on who's going to get the most on. Yeah, I'm getting out of here. You're going to buy me a motel if we put on it. Yeah, yeah. We're going to give away for another hotel tonight, Brother, because he's an automatic quit. <laughs> Dan Gleasel Godden says, Amen. Well, Amen. I know uh, I wouldn't get enough love offering to pay for that, too. Huh? I know I wasn't getting. Oh yeah, if we start giving away any more hotels, you gonna start owing me. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> Michael and Kimberly Hargis says hello, brothers. Well, hello Hargis. there, Hargis yeah. family. Y'all know them. Oh yeah, good folks. Boone Hook KJV says watching from Davo, Philippines. Amen. <laughs> you know? You know him? Who? What? Okay. Who? Uh, what? Let me no, see. Oh, I, oh, I thought no, no, I thought you knew somebody who was over there. Okay, with him. Boone Hook KJV, you don't know him? Yeah. Boone Hook, you know? I just don't know who Boone Hook is, but I, I, yeah. You know Brother Boone Hook? Yeah. yeah. That sounds like a redneck name, but he's from the Philippines. Boone Hook. Yeah, oh, Boone okay. Hook. okay. I don't think that's, is that his real name? Bone Hook, I'm sorry, it says Bone Hook. That's real redneck. That sounds like a wrestling, that sounds like a backyard wrestling name. They call her a wrestling move. I mean, that's the Bone Hook anyway. Sounds like somebody's <laughs> known from the old days. <laughs> <laughs> Kayla, vividly <laughs> <laughs> pick names. <laughs> Kayla Pickham says, "Do y'all believe that John four one is say that Jesus's disciples did all the baptizing, or that Jesus baptized only his disciples?" I think we talked about this last week when we were with old Kayla. So the question is: Is did is it saying that only his disciples baptized? Or is it saying that Jesus only baptized his disciples? You got it there, read it for us. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. I think the, the context is pretty clear. It's talking about his disciples. Baptized baptized. People. Yeah. I think it's uh, the, the more interesting thought is that you know the Pharisees were like some of the fundamentalists that just put an emphasis on the number of baptisms and people didn't say that's neither here nor there that's just a that's, side note that's, that's, that's <laughs> probably not our first time tomorrow no. <laughs> Randy what do you think uh, I, I will agree with y'all but I've got this I got this thing that was just sent to me and I, I'm trying to keep from saying anything but it's so good I feel like I can't help it um, well, say it. We well it's a, it was a, a message that was pro a private message to me that they just saw that Phil Kidd is releasing a workout and anti-bullying video in December. Oh, Lord have mercy. Yeah, you know. <laughs> hey. This is Phil Kidd, hey, and I'm releasing the best workout video. I mean, I'm not going to mock it. I'm against I bullying. Now, all you hypocritical <laughs> Pharisees, if you got anything to say to me, I'll bust your mouth. I've got three men in this room right now. You're in line with internet. Oh yeah! yeah. <laughs> let us really let good. us mock him. We're fine. We, we're used to it. No, it's, he's used. To, he's used to being mocked. I mean, it really is. I mean, he's been around the the the, the, yeah. the circus. He's really. I think it's really funny. He's really. So him working. Hey, I'm, I'm not mocking. Mock mock I I mean maybe. Now I what I would it. do is I would say get your CCW if they mess with you, and they threaten you, take care of business. You won't have that problem anymore. Carry a bat. Do something. 
man up, you have less bullies. You ain't got to pay nobody for that. If you had a sissy daddy, ain't nothing we could do oh, about geez. that. Oh. You know what I'm oh. saying? Oh. Oh. Take martial arts or something, man. Randy! Randy! What's on the broadcast? I mean... And also, it's kind of serious, though, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think I the problem with this bullying junk is... You know, the Lord promised us that we'd be bullied. The <laughs> Lord promised us that if we stood for Him, we were gonna. There was gonna be bullies. So just get used to it. I'm gonna be honest. It's it's for the him. the <laughs> fact that Phil Kidd is releasing an anti-bullying program is probably the irony of the century. Well, they they <laughs> they. Uh, I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying, man. If, if you're dealing with a, a person on the level of the Lord, fine. You walking down the street, man, so they're gonna smack in the head. You do whatever you gotta do. I'm not, I'm just, you know, I ain't gonna let it happen. <laughs> See, yeah. they followed that comment up to me with a gift, a gift that said, stay classy. I knew all I had to do was read what was said. I wouldn't have to say a word down here. You guys would take care of it for me. It's just, it's just, oh, it's, it's getting well, stupid. Yeah, it's, it's just, just getting stupid. And, and that's self-defense, what you're talking yeah, about. But, yeah. but bullying is somebody intimidating somebody. Listen, if you can be intimidated, then you then you need to you know and you just stop worrying about yourself. That's a that's that's a self. Uh, you know, you're, you got the spirit you've got of a, fear. Yeah, you exactly. Mean. You got a self. It's a problem with self. And uh, if you're if you're too concerned, you're going to have to listen. Uh, when when self is is rubbed the wrong way, yeah. you just have to you know let it run run, run off your back. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. We need to be teaching. We need to be teaching our, We need to be teaching our kids how to deal with rejection and deal with you know things that that hurt their feelings instead of trying to get them to. You take them door knock and they'll learn real quick. Yeah, there well, you yeah. Go. You know the preacher brought it up tonight uh, about you know people getting bullied on Facebook and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. I mean, people call me names when I was a kid. Yeah. You know, I don't know what in the world's going on where. Yeah. You, you're so hurt by someone calling your name that, oh, that you old, kill yourself. I mean, I've been accused because of because they're being the taught that. Yeah. They've yeah. been taught that in the school, and they're taught all of them. I mean, they're just taking every self-respecting thing away from kids. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt. Yeah. Oh man. Word, but words do hurt, brother David. We need safe places. Yeah. <laughs> His words do hurt. Yeah. His word will hurt you. That's for sure. That's, that's yeah. Like I see it. What that's about that one with the puppy dog tail? Remember that one growing up? Yeah. Snails and. I think that's like a boys, boys. Snips and snails and puppy, puppy dog, dog tails. tails and girls were what? Sugar, uh, sugar spice, spice and everything nice. Yeah. That was the difference. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'll tell you what, man. Why does Phil Kid get brought up on so many broadcasts? It's a photo op thing. It's like people get out there and want to be still in the news. Well, he ain't yeah. posting up pictures on our broadcast. People keep well, bringing yeah, them up. Somebody's doing something. <laughs> Hey, no, I, mean, you know, I think I think Jason Porter, Pastor Jason Porter, ought to sit. Oh, Pat, he's not wearing a tie. Oh, oh, that's man. okay. That's bro, good. He can, he can bro, bring that with his eating. Brother sure. Porter, come on up. Come on up, Brother Porter. Hurry. Oh, my goodness. We're violating a chief rule. Oh. Here, let, let me go get him a chair. Oh, well, he's not wearing a tie. He can sit, he can sit, if he's not wearing a tie, he's going to sit in the gallery. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. So, sit in the gallery. You, you, <laughs> you can offer comments, brother. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Put you in the penalty box back there. We pray for this man now and at the hour. No, I'm kidding. Uh, not wearing a towel. Oh, my goodness. No, Brother Porter is the pastor of um, youth pastor. Youth pastor at Ryan Gunther, Victory Baptist Church. He looks like a youth pastor. No tie. Listen, he did. I have never, every time I've been around him, it was like at Brother Gunther's meetings. He was very serious. We're super good to see him. Thank you for being here, blah, blah, blah. Very professional. He got a youth camp, and I saw a side of Brother Porter that I've never seen, but I like. And he did a skit. The funniest, me and my wife still talk about it. He did a skit where he dressed up like a like a liberal youth pastor named Pastor Chaz. Is he wearing that outfit tonight? Uh, no, it was actually much more flamboyant than that. Oh, it was kind of like that Bible. It was kind of like this Bible. Imagine if this Bible was on his body. Okay. <laughs> With a lot of, like, feathery things. It just, yeah, it was, yeah. It was funny. But anyway. It wasn't downtown Detroit. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. All right. The Godwin said, watching from Philippines, Robert Oliver says, hello, dear men of God. I needed to get off all that very quickly. Alex Henson says, love you, brother Sir. Love you, brother Hickson. God bless you, my brother. Uh, Humberto Gomez says, watching. Yeah. Boy, we love brother Humberto Gomez. Y'all know brother Gomez. Humberto? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Humberto. He hero. is. He's a hero. Of He's a hero of mine, too. When I was a teenager, back in the day, he would be singing at Charity Baptist. Yeah. Him and his wife. His wife. 
Yes. He, well, he suffered a lot for the word of God. He would have turned. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he didn't have to, actually. Holy Ghost got him. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> Hang on a second. That tone? <laughs> Hang on. Hang on. Hang on give the tone to Jerry. <laughs> Uh, he, he says, good friends. He's talking about y'all, good friends. Amen. Uh, Kenneth Sarah Mack Jr. says, is the meeting still going on at Brother Duty's tomorrow? If so, is a non gapist theorist preaching? Oh, my goodness. Um, they got yes. Listen, I love Brother Randy. We may disagree on a few things, Amen. but I love him here. Amen. And he is preaching tomorrow. I appreciate tomorrow it. Tomorrow night, Amen. 6 o'clock. Be here. Amen. I'm preaching tomorrow at 11. And I believe in the gap. Oh, uh, he doesn't. Who doesn't do it? Well, that's his problem. We'll find out when he dies. <laughs> that's a hard way to find out. Okay. Yeah, Gordo yeah. says, "Stand in the corner. You like that darkness? <laughs> and you, then you can tell me from here where it comes from. And that's so you know, and you can. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, you can. You're right. Gap. You're right. You stand the gap and get something. Yeah, there you go. Lori Carrie Andrews says, "I say Amen. I say Amen right there, Miss Andrews. Hello." Joanna Sam Hanna, uh, she's a member at my church. She says, I just want you to know that there is a Calvinist revival going on in Haywood County right now. So far, everyone must already be saved. <laughs> How can they have a revival? It's like an oxymoron. Oh, and I know Calvinist the church she's talking about, too. Okay. Which one? No. No. Call the name preacher. No. It's Louis Hood, not him, but a guy out of this church. Oh, I know him, too. Yeah. 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 Here we go. Yeah. Hey, I know what I'm preaching on tomorrow night already. What? I'm preaching on three gospels. Amen. Hello. But but I, I saw something I've never seen before, and I hope nobody else ever seen before, too. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the Lord will build a new truth to me. You may have. Well, <laughs> well, <I'd like laughs> we might find out if it's Lord or the devil won. Amen. Well, if it's new, it's not true. I've heard that. Yeah. But, hey, Tal Sarani Curl says. The new Bible version changed doctrine to teaching, so they have no idea where their doctrine comes from. Second Timothy three sixteen. All right, good statement. Uh, Humberto Gomez says some of the greatest meetings in Charity Baptist Church. Amen. 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 Jack Helu says, "Praise the Lord Jesus Christ and thank God for the King James Bible." I've heard someone explain God uses the wicked the same way law enforcement would use drugs planted to attract drug users and buyers. Lord willing, that made sense. He used the lion spirit. Yep, lion spirit is sent. Sent you got, the lion you spirit. Got glory out of that. You start sure talking is. about that lion spirit from the Lord, and people lose their modern day Christianity. Yeah, loses they don't understand their because they don't understand the God of the Bible. They, they, they don't yes, read their Bible. They don't read. Oh, He can deceive. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, but if you got a problem with three, what about the seven spirits? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, let's go to seven spirits. Then. Yeah. Seven, seven spirits. But what do you think about all yeah. that? I just I'm thinking of my teens going back and forth. <laughs> 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 okay, well, feel free to chime in anytime, Brother Porter. I feel bad. Do you want to come up here? No, I said, no. Oh, no. he's got to get going. Okay. Our brother is like, no, no. All right. He says you got to go. Do you have any parting words of wisdom? Just watch your teenagers. Okay. Watch your teenagers. Watch your teenagers. Okay, Thanks fair enough. Guys. Appreciate it. Sorry about that. All right, that's okay, brother. Hey, yeah. hey, feel honored and privileged. You're the first man without a tie to be on the broadcast. Say it's probably the first youth pastor, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's that's nice. You're not setting a good stereotype. I'm kidding. <laughs> we love you, brother Porter. Thank you. All right, let's see here. Um, Robert Garcia says, Praise the King James Bible, Psalms 138 2. I agree with that. Amen. Karen Bearden Patterson says, hey, fellas, Brother Jack said hello. Yeah, what's up hey, with Jack? what's yeah, going on? Are y'all still yeah. coming next week? What's happening? So it's five-car pileup. I mean, he, he Facebooked, he Facebooked it. it. Yeah. Brother Jack, five-car pileup. Yeah, that was, that was one sentence with like seven exclamation points throughout. So is he okay? Huh? I don't know. I didn't get an answer. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Okay. We'll find Please out. Please let us know. Caleb Pickham says, my dad is a great man. Do you remember that story, Randy? Randy? Yes. Um, somehow Phil Kidd came on. Like the first time Phil Kidd. he came up and like out of the blue, it says. Paul Kidd, his son. Paul Kidd shows up. Yeah. He was watching and Paul Kidd says, my dad is a great man. And from there to the yeah, end of the broadcast, just about every oh, person. Every person on there commented that. Like, my dad is a great man. I'm a great man. 
My dad's dad was a great man. <laughs> yeah. My dog's dad was a great man. <laughs> now, well, how do we get back on this other guy? Phil Kidd, man. Well, somebody, somebody made an inside Super joke okay. about him. Yeah. See, uh, some of our faithful viewers who have been watching since the beginning, right. they dig up bad history. And, and Caleb's... Yeah, I don't remember the kid thing. I used to turn it off. Oh, okay. I just cut the reruns usually. Yeah. Well, Sam Schaefer says it's getting deep tonight, and by deep, I mean theologically. Hashtag be a 55-gallon drum, not a thimble. Amen, brother. Who said that? Uh, brother Schaefer. Okay, good. Tal Sarani Curls says, Brother Andrew, what do you think of this verse for everything being destroyed in the earth during the flood? Genesis 6, 17, Behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. I don't know if I've ever necessarily thought of that. What do y'all think about that? In the, earth. in the earth, you think that's just on the earth or in the earth? It says in. It says in. Well, I agree with that, brother. Do you? What do you think that's talking about? Jeff? I think it says in. I know, but what do you think is? What do you think that's talking about? Jeff? Everything that's in the earth. And that could be your Eden going down with the people there. Oh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm I just saying, it. if it's in the earth. Okay, but if my theory is right, I'm not saying it is, but if right. my theory is right, then that means the children of, of Adam and Eve when they fell down. I don't know. Maybe they didn't have any children before they fell. Yeah. Brother Ann, what do you think I was talking about? Hmm. Your wife's right there. Who are you texting? I know. I'm newlywed and everything. Cut it off. A friend of yours. Yeah, a friend of mine. Okay. Pastor friend texted me. Okay. Yeah. Gotta keep these meetings up. <laughs> Moses, dear Asena, says, hello, brother. Greetings from Andy. Hello there, brother Moses. He's a good fella. Uh, let's see here. Dustin Hoofman. Good to hear from you, brother Hoofman. I ain't heard from you in a while, my brother. Do you believe Matthew became the 12th disciple after Judas? I think he meant to say Matthias. 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 Yeah, I said Matthias. 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 Yeah, well, I was thinking the Spanish way to say it is Matthias. And I was trying to fuse Matthias and Matthias and Matthias. Anyway, C, C. And if so, was his was this God's choice? So, Matthias chosen to replace Judas. I think that's pretty clear from the scripture. Yeah. 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 The question is, I think the real question was here like is, plan B or was it Plan B? Was it God's intention? Also, this good time we've had this question for Randy. The twelve apostles whose names are written on the twelve foundations is Matthias. There is it. All, what's what's all going on there? That ain't Judas. I you know it's Matthias. You think it's yeah, Matthias? Yeah. Do you think that God wanted Matthias? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. you know, I, I think I already knew who Judas was. You already knew Judas. I mean, I think God did. I mean, he, you know, he went to his place. Oh yeah, probably, uh, probably son of a yeah. <laughs> So you know, I've heard some guys say that uh, Matthias wasn't the right one. I have too. And they were trying, you know, to go ahead of God, and Paul should have been the twelve. But I think Matthias was the right one to take the place, and Paul was the 13th. And that makes sense. Yeah, it says to me too, to the Gentiles. Yeah. Yeah. So I think well, that line Barnabas, Barnabas, sure, was, yeah. Barnabas was 14. Because Barnabas was an apostle. Mm -hmm. So I'm going through a John Mark thing now. <laughs> <laughs> Norman E. Merkel says. Hey, Norman E. Merkel signed up for the Bible call. Yeah. By the way, if you're interested, $50 a month, registration, you get $50 registration and $50 a month. This month is enrollment month. AshevilleBaptistInstitute.com. You can go there five classes a week, 30 minutes apiece, and you can get you a bachelor's degree in three years. And we've got a new course that's being added on uh, bullying and fitness. Taught by instructor Phil Kia. <laughs> <laughs> They're not gonna let this go, are they? <laughs> That's just too good. That's he like, brought up that see, is he, comedy he gold. stirs it up. <laughs> I get blamed for it. He stirs it up. Yeah, that's about how hey, it goes. most of those posts where everybody gets mad at me, y'all don't realize. I asked him about him first. He's like, I didn't know. Yeah. And then he, I posed them and be like, Why did you say like? I have no idea. That's <laughs> <laughs> the same way with your servants too. I, I show up and hear stuff. I said two years ago from the pulpit when you're preaching. Whatever, yeah, man. Norman E. Merkel says the disciples were probably already baptized by John the Baptist. That's probably true. Would you agree with that, folks? Okay. I don't know. Uh, Tim Valerie Lambert says, wow, watch out for Bad Bob Nagowski. 
with Tim Lambert's good name. He was here like he has a good name. Yeah, his dad's a good man too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, his dad goes to his church. Well, he's he's good. Good. I bet he likes his dad too. But he thinks his dad's yeah. a great man. A great man. Not just a good man, a great man. Uh, Brother Lambert uh, gave me some steaks that would make you want to slap him. Brother Lambert out. has been a blessing to this church. Uh, meetings after meetings, he's, he's donated stuff for us for the, yeah. for, the, for the food for the meeting. He's a blessing. Yeah. Well, even though I didn't receive any directly, I indirectly received some of those from Andrew. Yeah, I was mm -hmm. great. Oh, Beef sticks, was it? Out of the kindness oh, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and and those cheese curds. Yeah, you don't want to get mm -hmm. that. Uh, what did I get? The hot Good. Well, out of the kindness and graciousness of my heart, I gave for the Rams and Blues beef sticks. Where are you going, Doc? You getting you getting tired there? I'm not here. Oh man, are you getting I'm tired? Here, Can I mention your name, David? <laughs> <laughs> I had nothing to do with this. I didn't say nothing. I don't think I don't a lot of David. 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 <laughs> a lot of David. Amen. Can, can we plug your book? Better. Give me the book. Give me the book. Give me the book. I'll plug it. For the Davis Go Spurgeon. give me the book, Caleb. Brother Davis Spurgeon has a good book. Uh, it's a testimony of his life before he got saved. Even better than Facebook. <laughs> yeah. we're, not, we're, not saying that, we're not saying that Brother Spurgeon's here. No, no, no. He's no. not. No, he is no, not just saying, We're just saying. Voice up heaven. <laughs> No women on the broadcast. No, I'm kidding. And it's available on Amazon.com. You can get it. Is it really? Yes. It yes. Is. Bible Baptist Bookstore. Yeah, it's and, also available and, at Bible Baptist Bookstore. And it's, and it's geared not with a gospel uh, message at the beginning. It's uh, talking about brotherhood, talking about motorcycles. If you like motorcycles, he goes in there through a lot of that. And you get at least the heartbeat of what goes on. And uh, but at the end, he goes right into the gospel. A lot of wisdom. And it, and and Brother Spurgeon will be preaching tomorrow night as well. Amen. And tomorrow morning at the youth rally. Yeah. And he's not here, but Brother Caleb Pickham says to tell him hello. If I was here, I would say hello, Caleb. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Oh. Well, I'll tell you, I don't usually read a lot of biographies or autobiographies, but just listening to Brother Spurgeon talk last night and Brother Nogowski, Man, I'm definitely reading this book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bucks. Yes, for 15 bucks, I'm reading this book. Oh, <laughs> uh, Tim Pomeroy says, I'm here. Let the party begin. Uh, let's see here. All right, but Miss Miss Patterson says, we're, he's fine. Whiplash, four-car pileup. We're back home. Amen. Okay, that's good. Hey, Josh Schuster asked me a good question. In Jude 9, and we, and folks, we're going to wrap this up probably very shortly. In Jude 9, what was Michael and the devil arguing about concerning Moses' body? What were they arguing about? Yeah, yeah, why were they contending for the body well, of I Moses? I think the devil wanted to use, use, use Moses', Moses body. body. Yeah. Well, we know oh, as like a vessel, like a possessive. I really believe that. Probably trying to keep the, uh, coming back. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's what yeah. I always thought. Amen. But your theory is interesting, too. Yeah, yeah. Because he, he's been known to do certain things in the Bible. So you think the devil wanted to possess Moses' bo body? Yeah, they were the original zombies. Yeah, the original. Mm, I've never heard that. I've often thought, you know, he was trying to get it so that he wouldn't come back in Revelation 11. But what do you think? I think, that, I think that's either, either one. Sounds, sounds feasible. Yeah, I figured being in, he'd come down and lead. And people would say, wow, here he is. Yeah. He could change the whole scope of things with his philosophy and his new theology. Randy, what do you reckon? I mean, I guess either one's viable. Not to sound political. <laughs> Never. Uh, Corey McCraney says, hello. Hello there, Corey McCraney. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Josh Schuster says concern. And we met him way, last he was night. Here, yeah. He was here last night. God bless you, Josh Schuster. Good yeah. time to meet you. He drove an hour and 45 minutes to get here. Well, he, yeah. He did. Let's see here. He says concerning Matthias, Matthias, good night. Uh, Proverbs sixteen thirty three. Yeah, the lot is cast into the lap, but the whole disposing thereof is the Lord. So the Lord's in charge of the lot. I agree with that. I believe that. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Cormac Crane says Timothy, Sylvanus, and Sothenes were apostles as well. Were they? 
Were they eyewitnesses to the death, burial, resurrection of Lord Jesus Christ? I don't know. Well, it never says that they were that, but if it says they oh, were you mean apostles, they like the hundred twenty or something. No, 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 like apostles. If it says they were apostles, I believe they were. I can't think of a single place where they're called apostles. Mm -hmm. But Corey McCrane knows the book, so we'll see. Tell us about it, Corey. Or Corey, excuse me. Caleb Pickens says, Do y'all believe that Peter was the second disciple on the road to Emmaus based upon Luke 24 34? Let's go there. I'm already there. Uh, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. Ooh. What do you reckon about that? And hath appeared to Simon. This is something that I've heard throughout my life uh, that it was. Uh, Peter and potentially his wife. I mean, I don't really know if there's anything biblical to support that, but that's something I have. But that's about. interesting, the fact that saying the Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. Mm -hmm. mm. I'd, I'd maybe say that, Caleb. Well, if you look at the, if you read it though, these two fellows are recounting that the Lord appeared to Simon. So he must have told them at that encounter that he had already talked to Simon. Mm -hmm. So I don't think he was one of the two because the two are telling that story. In the context. In the context. And it makes sense that the Lord would have saw him after mm -hmm. I see what you're saying. saying yeah. yeah. I mean, he had him and Kirsten. Sorry, Caleb, that's done. Never talk to Simon. <laughs> I wouldn't say he tried. He tried. He tried. <laughs> hey, Caleb knows the book. He I does. Say I that. hear him. I hear him. I hear him watching, we'll say that. watching you guys. And yeah, well, it's been brought from the book. That's what happened. Yeah. Diana Boucher says, my comments look weird. Not complaining. Just say anyway. <laughs> Share it here, love. All right. Well, <laughs> I it's can't. okay. I mean, I text the next day. I know later on, after, day later, I'm going to think, oh, thank you, brother. I'm looking for what? I hit it. That's what I said on that. But you were like, wait, this program was over. Yeah. Or yeah. I'll answer something. And you're on, like on three different questions. Yeah. And then they say, then brother, brother, oh, that's brother. Okay, when we used to ask the live questions, yeah. we'd get people like three days later be like, yes, yes. Like people come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like people say, you forgot to count my vote. It's like <laughs> three days later. Like, yeah. uh, Joseph Deering says, have you ever seen the Calvinist try to infiltrate your church? Y'all ever had any Calvinist try to infiltrate your church? Hmm. <laughs> oh, no. no, just the Anderson guys. I think. No, I don't think infiltrate them. That's not the word I would use. Yeah. I had one trying to infiltrate my church. You yeah. took care of it yourself. Come on. P people, apparently. You need to clear the say, air. Yeah, apparently, from what you say, people think I'm a coward. From what I say? Yeah. Well, that's what. No, from what you've told me. Oh, what yeah. Think. Well, yeah. No, but not they, that you're out there saying I'm a coward. No, you're out there saying you are. No, I'm not even saying that. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, people just don't. That's why we like watching people these just don't know like things. an act sometimes. It's just like. Maybe yeah. maybe Randy Keener's not preaching tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> no, people just don't know things. Yeah. Yeah, so. I mean, he did trip out there and thank you God. You hear and renounce all, all five points of Calvinism? Huh? You hear and renounce all five points of Calvinism? Yeah. yeah. As, as, the as they're stated by uh, John Calvin. If you're satisfied with that answer, I don't know. <laughs> Okay. Well, I, I'm confident he's not. Yeah, it's a it's a warped. I'm glad one of us is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a warped view, you know. I, yeah, I mean, I do believe that man is depraved, but I don't believe he's enabled. Right. And yeah, definitely not total because he can do good things mm -hmm. on his own, even though he won't go to heaven for him. Right. 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 I've never had, as far as I know, I've never had a Calvin try to infiltrate my church. If they have tried, they've done a real bad job. They just never come around our stuff. I mean. Okay. Madeline Sherry says, hello from Arkansas. One of the proofs given in defense of the gap theory is the absence of God saw that it was good in Genesis 1 through 7. Genesis 1 verses 7 through 8. But Genesis 1 through 1 says that everything he made was good. What are your comments on this? I'm still on the fence on this issue. Uh, I, I do use that. I believe that's uh, an anti-gap evidence. That's when I debated Brother Reese and uh, we're, we're friends. You know, we had a very cordial debate. It's on Brother Andrew's page. That was one of my uh, arguments against the gap theory. Y'all got anything on that, Reverends? 
about what he said was good? I don't think yeah. those proves it yet. No. All right, um, let's see here. Justin Childers says, do you know what Ruckman was referring to in his reference Bible in Proverbs 28, 28, post-trib rapture? It says, when the wicked rise, men hide themselves, but when they perish, the righteous increase. I don't have my reference Bible with me. I'm using it in the car. Mine's somewhere. Yep. Yeah. So Catch I, us on that in two weeks. Yeah. We got the, the blowout next week, so yeah, no broadcast, but watch the preaching. Uh, Timothy, or excuse me. Docs? Oh, no, no, ours. No, the backwards oh. Bible blow up. No, Doc Rubin doesn't have any. Well, I thought they had like on <laughs> September or something. Well, no, that's Donovan's name. Oh, okay. He's having, oh I'm feeling this now. <laughs> <laughs> Doc Rubin doesn't have any more blowouts. He blew up. Uh, so you're going to Chandler then? <laughs> hey, man. Chandler. <laughs> <laughs> I blew out. <laughs> yes. I don't. Uh, I go, I go to my. Money. Money. That's true. So I, go to I go to my blowout. That's what I go to. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew goes to his own meeting. Chandler and Donovan can do whatever they're doing. I don't, I don't have any sides in that. I don't even know the story. Uh, Tim Joy Gunther says hello from New Zealand. Uh, Tim, really good guy. Uh, Seth Hayes says, are you familiar with the Ryrie Study Bible? And if you are, thoughts? I'm not familiar with it. It's got, it's got pretty good. It's got some good, good? stuff. Yep, good stuff. It's got some good stuff. And as long as you got sense enough to know when he's going against Scripture. You know, you always take scripture first. Just like spoken. Right. The wisdom in there, though, is really, really good. Now, Dustin Hoofman asked the question, who do you believe the two witnesses will be in the Battle of Armageddon? Um, Brother Hoofman, I love you, but I think you're fusing two chapters of Revelation together. Um, the two witnesses of Revelation 11, I think they're not in the Battle of Armageddon. Who do you guys think that will be? Randy, let's start with you. Uh, Moses and Elijah. Yeah. Yeah, yep. I concur. So the for the longest, time. yeah, the plagues, the yeah, shutting up heaven, yeah. calling fire down, calling yeah. fire down. Yep. For the longest Elijah time, just called out by name. Long. For the longest, yeah, Elijah is. For the longest time, they're the last two people mentioned in the Old Testament. Um, in in uh, Malachi four, on the Mount of Transfiguration. On the Mount of Transfiguration. Um, I'll say this: for the longest time, I thought it was Enoch and Elijah. Because that's an old mountain tradition. Because yeah. Enoch, Enoch never died. Yeah. But God has pointed him in once. Bless God is the type of the rapture man. And Noah man is the type of the two going through the tribulation period. And I can, oh, yeah. I can do that one, man. But the two witnesses, <laughs> man, they ain't Enoch. No, I know. <laughs> I know that now. He couldn't even get his book as a book. I know. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good man, though. He was a good man. His dad was a good man, too. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, his dad wasn't a good man. Oh, that's true. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Lady he died in the year of the flood. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. Well, no, I'm sorry, Methuselah. His grandfather died in the year of the flood. His grandfather. No, no, Methuselah. Or Methuselah was Enoch's dad, wasn't he? I don't know. Man. Now I'm confused. No, I am. I, 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 I. Enoch was Methuselah's dad. Yeah, because the old joke is, or the old riddle is, Methuselah was the oldest man that ever lived to have died for his dad. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Good riddle. Yeah. I never heard that. Well, they asked it, 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 we were in the seventh grade, and they asked that question, that little riddle, and everybody was like, mm. and I was like, I don't know. Ooh, that, that needs to be a trick question for tomorrow. For all the kids. Yes. Mm -hmm. The only one here is these two. Right? Oh, hey, Matthew. They weren't paying attention. Hey, man, Matthew Porter. All right, Matthew, are you good at ping pong? Good. All right, we'll see here. He want to play it then. Nine minutes. I'm going to go back there and show you how to play You're teaching MMA if you're bold. I'm going to, yeah, MMA. Anyway, anyway, now we shouldn't drag the children in. This <laughs> Josh Schuster said everyone needs a field kid's self-defense video in case the Calvinist tries to infiltrate their church. It won't work against non Baptists though. <laughs> yeah, but then the Calvinists should beat them up. You'll say, well, thank God that's over with. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know. I agree with that. that. Fun. Uh, first Thessalonians I mean, 1. Say, I wonder how that happened. Oh, okay. Quorum and Craney. I don't know. We may, I may learn something tonight. Okay. Uh, Brother Duty, can you go to First Thessalonians 2 6? I guess. Uh, let's see here. Because I got to go to First Thessalonians 1 1. Hold on the same speaking page. Anyway. Um, he says in 1 Thessalonians 1 1, Paul says, Sylvanus, Paul, and Timothy wrote to the Thessalonians, and in 1 Thessalonians 2 6, he says they are the apostles of Christ. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> where's he? Where's he get that? Okay, so two six says uh, Paul says let's back up and read the context. <laughs> but as we were allowed of verse four says, but as we were allowed of God to put in trust with the gospel, uh, even so we speak, but not as pleasing men, but God was tried the hearts. But neither at any time used be flattering words, as you know, nor a cloak of covetousness. God is witness. Nor have men sought we glory, neither of you, nor of yet of others, when we might have been a burdensome as the apostles of Christ. Um, I will say that that is in the plural. And here's the thing. We have to also think that Ephesians 4 does say that God gave some apostles. And if, that, if those gifts are still being yeah. given during the time of the life of Paul, it would make sense that there's given more right. Right, but if they, if they would have had to, they would have had to have seen, seen the risen Savior, and they may, they have. may have. They may have. I don't know, Brother McCraney. You may have taught me something there. I'd have to look at that further, but I can't think of why. I, I can't. I can't think. saying as like somebody did it before, like like Philip's apostles did. Can anybody think of a reason why it would necessarily be wrong? No, not wrong necessarily. Brother Randy, what do you think? Very good possibility. Joshua Alvarez. So we might have been burdened as the apostles of Christ. I mean, some of the other apostles of Christ were burdened some? I don't know. That's only other way I could do it, yeah. I thought people were paying me around. Joshua Alvarez says, is Jesus' appearance in Revelation 6, 16 through 17 as a lamb the same as in Revelation 19 when he appears as a rider on a white horse, or is there a difference? I don't understand the question. In other words, is it the same person or is it two different Jesus, two different lands? No, no, I think he's asking is Jesus' appearance in Revelation 6, 17, 6, 16, and 17 as a lamb, the same as in Revelation 19 where he appears as a rider on a white horse, is there a difference? I guess does Jesus take different, where I'm, where I'm seeing this, does Jesus take different appearances in, in heaven? I don't know. Could be the I mean, he's the lamb. He, John saw him as a lamb, and he's walking around on two legs. And they're by the River Jordan, so I don't think he takes his appearance as a. And he's probably referring back in this to particular just thing. the Lamb of God would take away the sins of the world. Yeah, wrath of the Lamb. Yeah, it seems here just uh, as a title that's given. Yeah. Yeah. I, w I will say this: John MacArthur had a, a good camp meeting thought on this because uh, and possible. <laughs> no, it's actually real good. Um, there about a chapter or so earlier, uh, chapter uh, six or chapter five or six, and I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, in the midst of the elders stood a, a lamb. Um, the previous verse calls on the line of the tribe of Judah, mm -hmm. and uh, he has a thing in his commentary on Revelation about when he saw Jesus Christ as a sinner, he. Uh, or he imagined that he would see him as a lion ready to rend him for his sins. But uh, when he truly saw him, he saw him as a lamb. Yeah, good good camping thought. You can build that thing. Yeah, yeah. I've seen some guys bring the house down with that. Josh, That's good thought. Yeah, Josh, just sure everyone needs to fill kids' self defense video against Calvin Tristan. Right, I agree with that. Dom, uh, Rick, Tom Shevesky. Says, who will reign with Christ in the 1,000 year reign? Only those souls who gave their life. All Christians are only those who have enough rewards. That's what say. So for when you reign with. Mm -hmm. Right. You, if you're over in Africa right now, and you're, you know you know what the deal is there, you're going to be killed. You're going to be martyred. Over here, we got a mental thing going on. Big mental thing. We got everything we ever needed right here. It's, it's actually easier for the devil to slip in and to neutralize us. And it's easy for us to give that up and just go the easy way. You have to suffer. And as soon as, you, yeah, as soon as you as soon as you said you are a Christian and you were, that's when the battle began. So if you have no battle at all, I'm suspect of what's going on there. You either gave totally in it or something else going on. But I know over here it'd be a mental battle. There's lots of suffering in the brain. And uh, maybe eventually it'll go to physical, but if you're in another country, I know you will. Brother Grady said American Express has done what Bloody Mary couldn't. Yeah. 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 With that material. yeah. yeah. I'll often say it, 2 Timothy 3.12, Yea, all that shall live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. 2.12. That's 3.12. Look it up. I know you got I'm looking it. at it. Yeah. 2 so, Timothy 3.12, 
Yea, all if we suffer with them, we shall reign with them. Second Not Timothy three twelve. Yea, Lord all that shall be godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer for okay. <laughs> um, I remember this book. Well, if you're living for the Lord, and doing what you're supposed to do, you're going to be suffering. Yeah, well, and that's what I, that's what I'm, <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm always talking about, people. If you're not if you're not suffering any type of persecution, I'm not talking about like people bludgeoning you. Right. I think the Lord. Will. But, but if you're not suffering any persecution, it's a sign you're not living godly enough. Right. That's what I often tell people. They hated him. They don't think the Lord will take that into account. Where yeah. You, where you're living. Yeah. Just like good or bad. Well, that's all the questions that we have, and I'm I'll be honest, I'm ready to wrap it up anyway. Brother Duty, thank you so much for letting us use sanctuary. This has been a good meeting this week. Yeah. It's a good Bible believing church. If you're in the Boyne City area and you're looking for a Bible Living Church in Michigan, or you're not in the area and you need one, come down and see Brother Duty. This is a good church. He's got a good family. It's, it's a beautiful sanctuary, man. If nothing else, just come look at the beautiful building we've got. The Lord has really blessed them. And we, but you have to pay for tours. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brother Nagowski, yes. good to have you with us. He's the pastor of um, Victory, Baptist. Victory Baptist Church. And you're north of Detroit, correct? Yes, Pontiac. Pontiac, near Pontiac. So if you're in that area, go see Brother Nagowski. Uh, if you're in Asheville, North Carolina, come see me. Go see Brother Randy over in Alexander where he lives, you know. So if I go to church in Marion. Yeah, go to church in Marion if you're in that area. So uh, anyway, well, anybody else got anything in, in conclusion? Leave, no, leave, us with the, leave us with a 15-second parting word, Brother Nagowski. 15-second parting word. I almost said it. Don't like, say it. <laughs> well, I mean, like a parting word as a, as a, some words I'll to say, leave yeah, us yeah. with. Okay. Well, the, the word is just stay on the firing line. Amen. Just yeah. stay in the battle no matter what. Stay in the book. And what I write on all these Bibles is love God no matter what. Amen. 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 Brother, Brother Duty, you got any parting words or stay, words? Stay in the book. Stay in church. Amen. Good all right. Word. Amen. All right, folks. Listen. It's been a good little broadcast. I've enjoyed this. So, like and share. Everybody like and share. We didn't ask for one single like or share this whole time. You need to get credit for. Uh, you need to credit for brother, Adam, brother Spurgeon, that guy's video. Brother Spurgeon, get, like, some kind of yeah. royalty, royalty. We need a kickback. Yeah, that. brother Spurgeon. Even though he's not here, he preached a phenomenal message tonight. But he's got a good book. And he mentioned, yeah, he got a good book. And <laughs> he, he in brotherhood. Yeah. And uh, he preached against he preached against Facebook, and I said Amen. Yeah, time. yeah. He, pre he preached against the evils. Of it. The right. evils. Of it. Well, I mean, I don't care if a preacher preaches against television. I'm glad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there's a lot, lot of bad stuff on television. Yeah. A lot, a lot of, of bad stuff on Facebook. People say you ought to take your TV out and bust it, and I shout Amen. I've got three yeah. of them. I, I, you listen. You may like preach preachers it. that hold a tight line. You may preach it straight, or not live it, but you can't preach it straight, or not like it. Okay? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, folks, we love you. We're praying for you. Pray for the meeting here. We'll see you next week at the blowout meeting, back with the Bible blowout. And you need to come and be part of that. We're going to have some good preaching. Bible College. Bible College. AshleBaptistInstitute.com. Sign up or be forever stupid. All right. Okay. We love you, folks. <laughs> no, people leave my church. I'll just say, stay one. Yeah, yeah, yeah.